Okay, time is passing, so while waiting for our moderator, let me just start my presentation first, if I may. Okay, the moderator is coming uh, because the last session is still in progress in the different room now. All right. Hello. My name is Jong Beang, interim chair of AP Sig Facilitator Group, and I will briefly introduce overview of AP Sig and would like to receive as many comments as possible from you for, for the cooperation among us. We have about 50 discus group members from various countries with various backgrounds. And you may find the, the discus group member list in APC website, as well as our the current development, which is being updated continuously. All right? Let me start. Uh, okay, can I go for the next slide? Yeah, as you see, okay, we have several regional six in continent level or the subcontinent level, and. As you also see, uh, we have some local six which are uh, being developed now in Asia. So last four, we've established the AP6 discus, discus group to serve several hundred internet governance leaders in Asia through professional courses on the internet governance, and through which we expect local six and IGFs in Asia to serve around 10,000 internet governance practitioners through their courses. So basically, we are trying to focus on developing professional courses on internet governance, developing open courseware, supporting development of localized courses, and collaborating with other six and IGFs. Our program has six tracks with over 20 classes, which include internet governance general, in our government's perspectives, in our government stakeholders, in our government institutions, as well as human rights and security area. And we are also developing our style of play class to have more intensive discussion among the leaders uh, on the selected issues. And we also have the discussion session on the hot topics. As you see, the schedule relating six in Asia, we expect several six in this year and the next year, including the first AP six in this September in Bangkok. As we're planning to transition to a regular service deployment phase from 2018 after the, the pilot current pilot project phase in this year and the next year, the major fundamental issues we are facing is how to serve several hundred of Asia-Pacific internet governance leaders while we only could accommodate 20 or 30 per annual APC event. And how to update the class materials every four or five years, of course, with securing lectures who are best in Asia and the world. All right. The basic plan is I stopped here and get comments and uh, try to address as many questions as you have with the possible with my colleagues. Uh, but we still don't have our moderator. But Yeah. Can I just get questions of yours or comments so I can address? Well, actually, um, if I may, uh, uh, I want to use some more minutes to introduce the, the first APC, which is going to be held in uh, Bangkok in this September. Uh, 
Can I go to the website? And to go into the AP SIG 2016 tab. It's going down a bit. Yeah, here. So this is the 2016 AP SIG program. So we have nine lecturers and 10 classes. The Internet Governance Principles by Adam Pick and Net Neutrality by Mahesh Yopo. Internet Policy Principles by Paul Wilson. Legal Perspectives by uh, K.S. Park. And political Perspectives by Jim Foster. Multi-Stakeholder Model by Jeremy Malcolm. And Human Rights General by K.S. Park also. And Privacy by A.B. Munir from Malaysia. And Gender and the Internet by Chad Garcia Lamilo. And Social Perspective by Young and Lee. And we also have the Multi-Stakeholder Role Play Crisis class session and the discussion session, the closing plenary discussion sessions. Okay, we are, we have moderator now, so uh, let me pass this mic to the moderator. Well, I guess, I guess Junpai has already done the job that I was supposed, I was assigned to. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry for, um, late. Um, well, I guess so. Uh, have we been covering on the agenda or thing? I think, well, the primary purpose of, of this meeting, uh, you know, is to, I guess, have a face-to-face -face meeting between between the um, um, uh, APSIC um, group and the MSG. Now, uh, of course, I understand uh, many of us who are working with or helping with the, the AP SIG are members of MSG. So um, I guess for, for those of us who, who are um, um, in, in both groups, uh, there, there's no need to, um, to further, I guess, introduce the, 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 what we're talking about. Um, I guess... Um, the most important thing uh, is to see uh, questions and especially comments, I guess, from from MSGs and 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 or other members um, on on the program and what it's about. Um, participants, um, you know, hopefully, um, um, Junbai and or, or some other members of us uh, helping with the if, if, if ABSEC uh, could help to to answer. Um, question, um, this question from um, Jason. Jason, come in. Okay. I think that would probably would be the key point. How how we're going to solve the issue we have? Because I think that Bangkok this year already uh, everything been pre prepared and decided already. So I think that will be the for for next year or something we need to solve this year. Well, yes, basically um, for this year, the first APC in Bangkok this year is already set up. The, we we set up the lectures and we already announced the the participant list. So okay. it's gonna be basically set up. So almost. everything is done. Yes, no more issue for this year. Well, we we still need to confirming the the final the participants, but. The APC is not the one-time event, so okay. we're going to keep move on, and actually we need to expand actually. So that's why uh, we put up the, we pulling up the the, the the issues for further for the development with uh, more cooperation among us. Okay, right. Thank you. That's my question, and especially a lot of panelists here they are, have a full knowledge in the internet governance. If you are available, I encourage you to participate and, and contribute your energy. Uh, thanks very much for the sharing, and and uh, I I just have two thoughts, which um, uh, basically 
if we go back to the basics, right, when we first started this conversation with also MSG, um, I'm just wondering how can APSIG, uh, which here talks about the goals of serving hundreds of internet governance leaders, how can APSIG, uh, which has some overlap with APRIGF's goals, how can they complement each other? At this point, it's not very clear how the two are complementing each other. Um, I know the Bangkok one that's coming is like a pilot of sorts, uh, but then uh, point four on this slide also says pilot project from 2015 to 2017 with service deployment from 2018. So how, how would we be able to work with each other going forward in the sense that APSIC can really contribute to the needs of APR IGF or vice versa as well? I'm just thinking back to the basics of where we started this conversation. I'm open to any ideas. I'm just asking a question. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think the uh, the um, the overlap and um, I mean the overlap in itself is not a bad thing. But potential confusion and replication of efforts was the was the issue we discussed at some length uh, when the MSG uh, invited. APSIG to to actually uh, collaborate and to merge um, merge or to to work together in some way and what um, where we're we're at now is I think it took APSIG a long time to decide whether or not to do that and ultimately decided not to and the implication at that time was that some future collaboration would uh, would happen so it's good to have this mess this um, this meeting uh, for the sake of working out if that future collaboration actually is intended. Um, and uh, and if it is, then how we can how we can do it? I think um, AP APSIG looks like a great uh, a great initiative. I think uh, one of the one of the comments that I made earlier, though, which reflects on both APR IGF and and APSIG, is that the IGF itself is a capacity building initiative. It's IGF should be a school of internet governance. It should be educational capacity building. It should serve that purpose for everyone. I don't come into Although I'm regarded as an expert, I don't come into um, into the IGF with the attitude that I know everything. I'm here to learn as well, and I think everyone who comes in is in that in that same position. If they don't think they are, then uh, I think those people are in in the very tiny minority. So I think uh, the School of Internet Governance, as such, or a School of Internet Governance and an Internet Governance Forum, really are, if not identical, then they're absolutely complementary. And in fact, I think the way the um, the APSIG is emerging, the way it's evolving, actually uh, reflects that and confirms it because you've got not just classes, but you've got discussion sessions on um, on internet governance matters. And so, where where the I mean, you're only uh, only confirming the fact that between discussion forums and lessons as such, there's really no clear line at all. So, I really I really do think that um, that. There's room for diversity, and I think there's a um, a call for some coordination because I can see that, at, particularly at the at the global level, um, from the perspective of the IGF itself, um, then sort of uh, there will be some confusion about where the where, if anywhere, there is a there is a, a point of coordination for the Asia Pacific. And so I'd I'd like to find you know if we're having a distributed model, then I'd like to find a way that we can. Make it sensible to the rest of the world, and make it make it workable and efficient for all of us who are um, who are in, who are involved. But I'm I'm very interested um, in what is the future in the in the mind minds of the APSIG, considering that we did have an opportunity to work together that didn't happen particularly um, well, at least not in terms of um, of co-locating, uh, and there was an expectation that after that there would be a longer time for planning. Towards you know what's a non-trivial uh, exercise in in coordination. You know, coordination does have a cost and it does have a lead time. So I think it's it's reasonable that we should look far ahead, and uh, and we need to we need to plan ahead. And so that's uh, right here is the, is the place to do that. If in fact we want uh, to do that, if that's our intention. Thanks. Uh, I have uh, I have some thoughts because uh, uh, you know I have uh, that unique experience thanks to uh, Wolfgang Kleinbachter uh, who launched uh, the European uh, uh, Internet Governance School, Summer Internet Governance School, as as much as Hung. Uh, she's she's been there for, uh, a couple of times. 
So uh, we were teaching there. I mean, uh, uh, that was a great exercise for all of us. So I would um, I would disagree with Paul because uh, this uh, school uh, is designated. I mean, it, it, it targets primarily uh, those who are not that well versed uh, 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 on the issue of internet governance. Because as you could see, those young people who were in the room, uh, they found it really hard uh, to catch up with the, with the audience because sometimes the discussion uh, elevated to some breathtaking height and uh, uh, they couldn't follow that. Uh, uh, while basics should be taught, and uh, that's one of those methodological principles you know, of education. So you've you got to just educate people uh, on that basic level and then take them step by step. Uh, uh, to more complex issues, uh, but back to that school um, uh, in Europe. Uh, you know, uh, usually there are like eight, uh, hung, if if I'm not mistaken, eight to ten. Uh, I would say mentors. <laughs> Faculty is about ten people, and then there are like thirty to thirty-five uh, students there. It's 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 a relatively small uh, exercise. Uh, and uh, the school is sponsored uh, by, uh, in part, uh, by uh, major European uh, registries, like uh, the Dutch one, the German one, the French, and so forth. Uh, in other words, uh, with, uh, with a number of people like 45, uh, they are self-sustainable because you know, those registries probably have, gotten, uh, have got that uh, long-term commitment. Uh, and that's important. So my question was, when I checked the list of, uh, uh, let's say, faculty, of the faculty and students, I found that the ratio was kind of uh, interesting, because it's like one faculty member per two students. So I mean, there are too many faculty members. And also, I was just wondering how we could ensure that uh, sustainability in terms of funding for a longer run, even for that pilot project. That's what really concerns me now. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's something. I think um, I, you have put on my hat as a member of MSG. I think I, I, um, I agree uh, highly with what Paul said. And I think, but uh, in terms of cooperation, I also initially I was involved in the early discussion as well, and I do remember I I, I wanted to see their their cooperation between APIGF to. 2016 and and the AP6, except that I think we had a few conference calls and uh, and then it was, there were too many issues to be discussed and resolved and and considered. So I think uh, at the end we it was kind of to me uh, it was uh, a time constraint that we had you know uh, uh, um, that otherwise would put. Um, um, AP RGF Taipei um, into jeopardy, or, or you know, we put too much pressure on the local host in terms of, of the program organizing, the, the, or the arrangement, and all that. So, so this, so that was how it kind of decided to, to it was decided to to be separate, um, and but in the long run, I guess besides, in addition to this, to 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 I guess besides the um, um, the Bangkok. Maybe sick. I, I do I do like to see uh, closer cooperation in the future because I think uh, we share a lot of uh, resources uh, in terms of lecturers, in terms of uh, um, event funding, and I think more importantly, uh, we need honestly the audience, participants or students, you know, and then and then I guess. Um, Obviously, you know, uh, I think as far as the, the the Bangkok event is is concerned, it has been uh, uh, doing a good job in terms of attracting a, a certain level of participants. But but I think if we can, you know, uh, ride on, you know, the success and uh, um, establishment of APIGF, you know, um, it would be even more, you know, kind of e effective. Uh, yes, I, I agree with um, uh, much of what Chester says. I mean, we we have um, just before this um, 
APRIGF, um, uh, Women and Gender Workshops organised by APC. We have Math Mission with Youth. It makes a lot of sense to have an APSIG co-located in future uh, when we're talking about general um, internet governance leaders. So if we can look at how the pilot project works now and then maybe consider how in future we can continue the discussion about co-location, working together more, that seems to be beneficial. Um, do the students, sorry, Adam Pete, um, do the students pay to attend the school? Is there a, is there a fee? Okay, can I go to the, the 2016 participants for quick? I mean, that's going to be an answer and also addressing to the, the Leonie's question, the lecture ratio. Um, yeah, as you see, uh, we, ha we, we just issued the, the 2016 participants list on 25th of July. And we have 40 total participants, uh, including nine lecturers. And there is some group chairs and local participants and partners also. And we identified uh, six internet governance leaders in Asia from among our uh, applications. And uh, we have uh, about 15, uh, you can say, it's just like general participants with full support, partial support, and no support. Uh, actually, we, we have about 20 full support, uh, including lectures. And we have about 10 partial support, and others, uh, others without the support. Well, uh, we received some, some other comments, but Adam, you want to you wanna go ahead on your comments, or can I address the other questions? No, I just, I, I just wondered, because if, um, if the students are paying, which they do for the European school that you know, had mentioned, the, the, there's, a, there's a fee to attend. It's a few hundred dollars, it's $500, $600. Um, and because of that, um, you don't share the lectures. It's a, it's a, it's a, it, there is a, a fee-related system there. But if it's generally free, then what we're doing in the APC can be more broadly shared. Right? I mean, but the reason Wolfgang does not make the lectures and so on public is because these are proprietary. They're things that both the lecturers are paying for, the, sorry, the students are paying for, and, and it's something that he generates revenue from. If that's not the issue here, then we have an opportunity to share more information than would otherwise be the case. So that was all my question. Uh, like uh, <laughs> the charging or the sharing, I guess eventually we are going to share. And even in the, this first year, it's a pilot project. Uh, we have those uh, charging scheme already for the, any those uh, late uh, uh, registration you have to pay. It's a sort of fast way to implement this one, and in the future, it's very likely. But uh, that those uh, registration fee covers only very small fraction of total cost, even in Europe. In the Europe, uh, I guess. The registration fee cover about 20% or so. And uh, so that's, we should separate from the, uh, uh, the courseware if it's available openly or not. Uh, we, uh, we are positioning our lecture the open courseware. The reason is, uh, <clears throat> is a very simple arithmetic. Uh, in Asia, <clears throat> we have about, to say, like about roughly 10,000 internet governance practitioner. And how do we offer the uh, uh, refresh course or upgrade course? And it's a very simple arithmetic. It doesn't matter how many those are sick 
we offer, no way we can cover. So the eventually we have to have an open course, like a, actually like an IGF retreat, they even said like a MOOC. I don't know if we have to go that far, but at least we have to have those open course there. For example, okay, I want to know the uh, internet governance history. Okay, there, at least there has to be one or two uh, video course so that you, you can learn. Well, any of those, uh, we have about uh, 20 or 30 those uh, core class. Every one of them, at least we should have a video course. So that if we want to know that particular uh, subject, yes, we, do, we, we should say we do have it. So the open course here is one of the objective of the APC, that because Asia Pacific is so, so big, otherwise no way we can cover. And the <laughs> second uh, is the, uh, I sort of agree with uh, those uh, uh, IGF retreat. Eventually we have to have uh, those, uh, the series of uh, course. First of all, those uh, uh, MOOC-like, uh, one semester course to the one week course for the uh, introduction. Second, for the uh, uh, sort of upgrade, refresh course for the practitioner. The third, to the uh, upgrade course or refresh course for the uh, leaders. After every segment, we should have it. And in the case of those uh, uh, leaders, which we are addressing, because we sort of think we have about 400, 500, up to the 1,000 internet governance leaders in the Asia Pacific. How do we offer, how do they have those upgrade goals, which probably they need every four to four, five years? And uh, that's the one we are addressing, and we are sort of asking the uh, national uh, SIG or the national IGF to offer the uh, introductory those course and the uh, uh, refresh course. And for the, what APSIG is addressing, we have to have a very interactive those Q and A. Actually, the participant, or well, you may call the student, and the uh, uh, instructor, both of them are in a sense uh, uh, come to, to learn. So we have to have a very extensive those discussion where you can get the uh, uh, answer anywhere else. So the, 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 the ratio should be, uh, uh, or the size of the class should be small. So we sort of set the hour, hours about 40, 30 to 40, 40 should be the absolute maximum. Uh, otherwise we cannot have those uh, interactive, those uh, uh, Questions like, uh, for example, I can give uh, one example. Like, uh, we uh, we just attended the surveillance uh, course. This surveillance area. What is the those multi-stakeholder uh, model? Is uh, the, the regular those are model of a uh, uh, multi-stakeholder applicable to the surveillance? So the, for example, the NSA join here to have a multi-stakeholder discussion. Those are the seems to be the issue we want to discuss among the other leaders. So there seems to be a several level of course. And uh, if you look at the different direction, uh, Professor Ayn is here, like we should have those uh, graduate course, academic course, one semester course, all the way to the very introductory, say like a, a two days course. There seems a whole spectrum of course for the, this uh, area. And how do we, do we do it? I guess we have to do the exploring. So the, so far what we are finding out is that uh, among the sake, okay, we address those leaders. <laughs> and we ask those uh, national sake to address the uh, uh, introductory course and the practitioner. That's how we are going to start. 
So the, what we can collaborate between uh, APC and APL IGF is uh, we have uh, about two, three working national uh, SIG. Now, we sort of expect, say, like a 10 uh, national SIG uh, in Asia. Then uh, we can address the uh, 5,000 internet governance uh, practitioners. And otherwise, no. And at the national level, in many cases, they may have those hybrid, uh, hybrid of IGF and the SIG. I just talked to the Afghanistan. Uh, they are going to start setting up. And uh, we, I was, we are discussing, they may start as a hybrid model. So the, do the first two days do not uh, seek, and the next two days on IGF like those topic. Uh, SIG is a more organized, class-like le uh, 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 lecture, and uh, IGF is a more sort of topical discussion, discussion of some specific topic, maybe not uh, structured. And, uh, and uh, in uh, each country, in uh, each region, they need both. So that way, I guess, uh, 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 national uh, level, they can optimize. Like a big country, probably they can have both. And uh, at a uh, uh, regional level, uh, Seems to be this is a complementary uh, effort, and uh, we do the uh, many kind of experiment from this year and the next year, and uh, we find it out. Then already we are finding out uh, that in the case of India, we are asking uh, India to be a uh, 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 double uh, uh, purpose, serving uh, India, which is uh, already is a uh, very big. Uh, Combining the USA and the Europe so is much smaller than India. And also, we're asking them uh, to serve the uh, South Asia, or even uh, Central Asia. Because uh, geographically, it's very easy for them to come to the India. And uh, so, the, in a sense, from the APSIG's perspective, they are sort of a, sort of a secondary uh, alternative to the source, uh, and uh, they they cover both those uh, introductory, and uh, probably they may have to cover also the advanced later. We'll, we'll see how the things work, and uh, then we need some more. Otherwise, one thing we don't we feel in a sense is very good, and in a sense we feel awful is that. Uh, uh, we just posted, posted the, uh, we don't have a APSG, if, a, a APSIG, if you are interested in, why don't you apply? Then we got a 200 applicants. And uh, then we know we can accept only 40s. Even among those 40s, 10, uh, actually almost close to the 15, is a sort of reserved by the lecturers and the, uh, uh, management. Then how do we tell the, those remaining uh, 160, you cannot come? Why don't you go somewhere else? And where is the somewhere else? Just go to the uh, Europe? So the, this is the issue. And <laughs> ironically, if we are successful in uh, this uh, uh, September in uh, Bangkok, then it's even worse. Next year will be a 400. Then we have to pick up a 40 out of 400. And I guess there, there's a demand right there. Okay, and uh, we have to have those uh, several many ways to serve those uh, community. And we all know, uh, everybody, anybody in the professional, they need to upgrade the refreshment, refresh course, say like every four five years. And uh, APSIG cover the only cover the only the very small portion. And uh, 
many other uh, players, including APR, IGF, uh, uh, should serve one way or the other. And that's something probably after Bangkok, we can get a bit better picture of uh, uh, what to be done. And we'll do a lot of experiment and uh, hope we can have some good those, uh, collaboration. Uh, this number is the uh, uh, something we just don't know yet how to do it. And uh, we just don't feel comfortable rejecting 160 out of 200. Uh, because, because there are no no reason, no justification we can reject them, except we don't just uh, we don't have a capacity. Then <laughs> shall we say like, a, okay, we should make an APSIG two, APSIG three? Probably that's not a solution. We have to we have to answer to the uh, uh, this question to the community somehow, and I hope in in two years. Uh, we can come up with some idea, okay, probably this is the way uh, we can handle in Asia Pacific. And if we solve the Asia Pacific, we are solving half of our, our global uh, problem issues. Uh, Satish Babu from India. Um, I'm, I work with APRELO, and I'm also involved uh, with the management of APSIG. And now I'm in the process of setting up the first India School of uh, Internet Governance. So a couple of observations here. Uh, first is about uh, courseware sharing. Uh, I see that APSIG has got several <coughs> stakeholders, including all of us, but uh, two distinct beneficiaries. One is, of course, the bunch of students who apply and get in. But the other is the other national and sub-regional schools of Internet Governance. They are also beneficiaries because we, like in India, would like to use the courseware, which is developed by APSIG. Uh, right now, what's happened in India is that we have this double whammy, meaning ICANN has come to Hyderabad. And uh, many of us saw that there's a good opportunity to have the India school right before or right after ICANN, so that we can make use of the resource pe persons who have uh, come there. So we have right now got it just before, uh, scheduled it for just before uh, ICANN. But uh, funding is very scarce. Uh, the government of India, which is funding us, has slashed our budget by 50%. And uh, there is no way we would have been able to afford uh, you know, paying for course fare. So uh, in, in countries like India, where there is a scarcity of budgets, it's important to share course fare. And even uh, otherwise, in principle, even if students are paying for it, I would, in principle, say that course fare should be shared. Uh, because we can say the same thing about MIT, who's paying, uh, who's taking money from students, but it's still they are sharing course fare. So that is one aspect. Uh, the second is, uh, uh, Professor Chon uh, alluded to uh, the fact that India, he, it has been shown as e e India plus SIG. That plus has come from uh, the fact that we will also be opening up for the neighbors, South Asia, South Central Asia, uh, anyone who would like to participate. The 25 pe people is our uh, current batch that we have planned, but 15 more we are hoping to get through. Uh, the APSIG. So this is just for information. Uh, and the fact that we are looking forward to collaborating with uh, APSIG, we would like APSIG to ha be a part of a composite structure uh, at the Asia-Pacific level as well as the different uh, national and sub-regional sub levels where we can share faculty and courseware and practices and uh, learnings. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the comments. and. And the reply for the comments. Actually, the Professor Chen covered uh, the question about the lecture ratio and the level of courses, and partially, and uh, as well as the, the registration fee to, for further management. And the point raised by uh, some some people, uh, the sharing resources, including audience and other resources. And how can we collaborate on other program, including uh, especially with APRIGF and, and other initiatives like APC and, and other APIRP and very related and many other initiatives. Actually, I think that's what we have to do uh, from now on. And actually, we are doing this, I think, in especially for the pilot project. How can we uh, identify the mutual interest? And we are talking about the NRI 
analyze national regional initiatives. And we are talking about IGF first, but how can we organize IGF if we don't have any community have some capacity to organize IGF? Sometimes we need uh, the intergovernment school first. That's why we're talking about the, uh, the collaboration of the Sikhs and the IGFs in Afghanistan and other local community. So that's why we need to uh, discuss further and uh, we need to figure out what it's going to be. So after that, we can we can say the, the what the best practice of the collaboration of different initiatives, I think. So, and that's why uh, we we expect some 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 more identification of the the sick, local sick related initiatives among among the APRGF members. Maybe we identified many, but maybe we missed something. Well, actually, uh, I met uh, mem <coughs> the participant of the APRGF in this morning, uh, who's from the the Internet NG from New Zealand, and they say. Uh, they are planning the the sick related uh, initiatives in New Zealand also. I think that's the uh, I think that's the stage where we are in, and uh, that's why we're doing this dialogue session for the cooperation. Okay, so um, uh, just talking about APILP uh, and uh, collaborating with uh, APRIGF, the the way we've organized APILP is um, as a lead-in to the a to the APRIGF. And the idea uh, is to bring people up to speed so that they can discuss the issues uh, around internet governance more readily. Uh, we are seeing a big group of people who are a part of the youth IGF. Uh, so this is part of the, the, the sort of introduction to, for them. Um, this last round, we have 60 uh, youth uh, ambassadors, uh, as Eminence call them, uh, who, who joined the APILP. There have been another about 40 who came on, uh, who stayed throughout, um, who are not part of the youth. So altogether, about 100 people coming in uh, for the whole uh, the whole training. Um, from what I observe about your APSIG, uh, yours seems to be more uh, intense. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. More intense, and uh, I mean it's an impressive list uh, that you have of uh, potential uh, training schools. So that is uh, uh, to be lauded, of course. I guess the issue is: um, uh, is there really enough uh, demand? Because uh, in our experience, we have a hard time uh, getting the APRP going. So we, the model we have now is having it day zero. That seems to have worked to some extent, so we are likely to stick to it. Uh, we modified a little bit, but basic idea of getting people up to speed, so new people coming in, understanding IG issues, you know, uh, then they can uh, uh, participate. So the, the, the basic idea we will uh, we'll carry on. Um, so the question is whether we have, there's enough demand. Um, I know that because um, I mentioned 400 people applying, that is, or 200 people applying, that is impressive. Uh, but ongoing basis, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm not saying there isn't or there is, but I just uh, don't know. Uh, I would also say there's something happening in Korea itself, uh, in Chon, the UN APC ICT, Asia Pacific Center for ICT Training, and there's in fact an online module uh, that I uh, have put together on internet governance. Uh, it's uh, under the virtual academy, uh, and that's been training training of trainers actually. It's gone all over um, uh, Asia. Uh, the latest, in fact, was in was to Iran. I actually went there to have some training in Iran and also to to uh, Myanmar. Um, I noticed there's a meeting in Seoul. It'd be great if you can sort of work to see if they they are prepared to to collaborate, uh, because there's some UN uh, training um, and it's a center for Government leaders in in the ITC uh, ICT sector, so I think it's something to, to look at. Um, but looking ahead at, for APLP, I think uh, you know there's obviously room to to collaborate if your uh, your faculty that you have. I don't know whether they are sort of reserved uh, the, there, but if if uh, they are you know prepared to come on to to, to give some training uh, for the APLP, sure, I think that that's not an issue at all. It's very open. Uh, it's very lightweight model. People just turn up and speak, and we've had, I think, five or six sessions this, this last round. And in fact, 6.30, and people still stayed on to the end. So it was quite a good uh, session, even though I spoke very little, and maybe that's why they stayed on now. Uh, but, uh, okay, I guess it's a good initiative for this APSIG. Uh, well, it is operating at a regional level, and is open to the whole region. Uh, and we've seen very happily more than 200 applicants uh, from 
many countries, one Asia Pacific, that's good. But what is being listed here, there's a couple of uh, uh, local uh, SIGs. Uh, uh, well, this is something new. Um, if we look at the European experience on, uh, well, the European summer school on internet governance, they don't have the national or local uh, schools. <laughs> but of course, Asia Pacific is different, it's big. Uh, so probably these uh, local or national <laughs> ones are needed. But we have to be aware that this, uh, each local internet community have some very special uh, characteristics, uh, right? Uh, that's something that's working in India may not be working in in in, in Beijing. Uh, yeah, uh, one one issue that's very at the superficial level is that we cannot use the name school <laughs> in Beijing. Uh, uh, we have the law, uh, right? Otherwise, we have registered with the government, uh, <laughs> and and I, I cannot take the risk of violating the law. So probably we are going to use the old name. <laughs> uh, we, we have the APILP Beijing uh, twice, I guess. Uh, it doesn't harm if we use continue to use the old name. Uh, the second issue is the language. Uh, for a, a Chinese-speaking community uh, like the one in Beijing, I don't believe it's very reasonable to teach in English. All right, and the, that and the simultaneous interpretation will be so expensive. We we really cannot afford that. So that's uh, language is a huge issue. So this localized one probably would be we need to be more bottom up, and and engage the local community. And the student shouldn't be a problem. There's a lot of students in in <laughs> in our community. Uh, it could be a a Chinese community plus like Indian and open to the other Chinese speaking community like Singapore, <laughs> they speak Chinese uh, and, and Hong Kong. <laughs> right? That's uh, that's something we, we, we could think about. But this every place is different. That's we have to be aware of. Yeah, thank you. In the China <laughs> Yeah, we want to, first of all, we want to see the, the, the China <coughs> uh, uh, to be very active in this area, not like India, because each one of them is huge. And uh, APSIG is not very uh, equipped to address the size. And uh, <laughs> then uh, what you said in a, the, the uh, local language, in general, the localization. I guess we have to go through in a, in a couple of areas. The first, uh, we have to address the local issue, Asia Pacific issue. Uh, for example, like uh, uh, internalization, localization is a, it's a very, uh, very important in Asia Pacific compared to the uh, uh, North America or the uh, uh, Europe. Then uh, uh, even uh, uh, like a human rights, privacy, there may be some difference. Then again, we want to uh, localize uh, as much as possible. Then uh, next one is the language. Uh, English is not good enough to cover as, you, as, you, as uh, China <coughs> uh, uh, Professor Hong uh, mentioned. We have to develop a local language version. Uh, this is very important in uh, both in uh, uh, Asia and Africa and Latin America. So the those are those are localization uh, uh, process is uh, very important. So the next couple of years we want to see the uh, uh, good those experiment uh, on uh, uh, many things, both language and uh, topics. Chet, uh, I think Chet has a want to make a comment. Yes. Yeah, um, I, um, in APC we actually co-organize the African SIG, and we also have been organizing gender and yeah. internet governance workshops. Now, I guess in in terms of um, the question around, there's a lot of demand. I believe there will be, it's it's there we, there is demand there. Because it's a, you know people are interested, but I suppose if we can only um, address a specific, you know, like uh, you only have enough resources to be, and also 
you know, time to be able to um, to uh, allocate, no, for a for an Asia Pacific thing. I think what's important then is to be quite specific, targeting what the objective is of the Asia Pacific level, because then that determines who you invite, who you in fact who comes to the who, what participants you target, because you may have 400 people, but then you'd have to be strategic about you know who to bring. If you're talking about leaders, what do we mean by leaders? I, mean, I do think that needs to come into the discussion, and maybe that's an area for collaboration in terms of discussing, you know, discussions with MSG. I mean, who are we? What is the, what is, what is it? That, what what area of knowledge and maybe leadership are we trying to build through SIG? I think that's important, and and then maybe the low lower line. And I don't mean that to mean this is you know less important, right? I mean there is entry point of understanding internet governments. Maybe that comes at a different you know different level, and maybe APA ILP is much more topical and current. But you know that, that kind of thing is the where I think collaboration can come in. So there's no duplication in terms of. While you can share coursework, the, 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 how you pitch the level of um, the discussion can be different, I think. And also the kinds of people and the kinds of organizations or constituents or whoever stakeholder you want to, we want to bring into the different areas. And that way is where discussion and collaboration can happen. On a more practical level, if you're looking at the Asia Pacific SIG as four days, and we're looking at APRIJF as how many days? Another three days? Not quite sure. You know, you'd have to consider that then in terms of practicality. I'm not. There are people who can come and stay for seven days, but where you're looking at faculty and you're looking at participants, it may not be possible. So I think that's the other consideration. Uh, what? Although I think we have to. I just I, I've also been part of that discussion. I think we have to get beyond just the general collaboration discussion. We need to like talk about practicalities in terms of who talks about this, what kinds of decisions we need to make, etc., so that we can move forward in uh, in decisions. And I, maybe the September, maybe one of the things we could do in this September is to say, okay, we then need to sort of assess where we're at people who are involved there and then have very specific recommendations so that we move forward for you know the next phase. Okay. Well um, I guess in the interest of time because we are point one thirty now. Um, um, but do you have any I mean how do you want to proceed? Do you want to, um, did you address other questions which I, I, I don't think we have been discussing or you know we should bring this offline. We we have we set a Schedule and then we, we we again consolidate the comments and we we, we decide on it. Well, uh, I think we it's it's good to invite more comments, one or two, uh, rather than my comments on that. Thanks. Perhaps not as well organised as they as they should be, um, but a few comments. Um, I think I think the purpose of the SIG is is really um, really useful to focus on. I don't, I don't just mean AP SIG, but I mean the whole collection of AP SIG, AP ILP, and now of course AP IGA as well. Um, the purpose uh, I'd propose is to support the IGF process. Um, it'll have a, a school of internet governance. Generically, would have a lot of other benefits, um, but I think. A sort of focal purpose that could be a, a direction for it could be to say, well, if this school activity is supporting the IGF process broadly, then it's then it's doing a good job. It's some, that's something that we can focus on, something we can work towards, something we can in some way measure. And by IGF process, I really mean the process broadly, which includes the IGF globally and also the idea of of local and regional IGF initiatives, which are uh, have been considered to be a very uh, important part of, of the IGF. So I'm, I'm talking about IGF generally. The IGF, the IGF generally isn't, it also isn't an end in itself. I mean, the IGF is supposed to produce outcomes or results and it's assumed to produce results. So when I say supporting the IGF, I don't just mean supporting having a bunch of people attending a meeting every now and then, but actually, you know, supporting the IGF is a healthy thing that does what it's meant to do, which is to, is to bring together people and advance internet governance. So if the school 
uh, if the school initiatives are designed and sort of measured and directed towards supporting the IGF, then presumably they're supporting the outcomes the IGF is supposed to achieve. And I think it would be useful to, to kind of decide that that's what the school is all about, or at least it's one of the main things that we could um, focus on and measure. But then we get, I think there's a, a contrast between, um, or there's, there's a sort of choice of, um, of approaches um, in doing that. And the IGF has got a very, very sort of um, specific way of doing things, um, which is not top down, it's, it's bottom up, and it's adaptive to what the community believes that it needs. You know, the, I mean, it's no, it's no sort of accident that the IGF a program is is designed by an open call for comment, for open call for contributions and proposals that anyone can participate in, and then that that um, those uh, proposals are then vetted and selected by this community group, the MAG, which is also a dynamic community-linked um, organisation. So that you know we don't have people sitting on high and deciding what's good enough and what's not or at least to the extent that we do, those people are selected and appointed by the community and they're rolled over quite regularly. So, so really it should be a dynamic system that produces very good content in a bottom-up bottom way. And I think that's absolutely essential because internet governance is changing dramatically and it will change in the space of four or five years or ten years. And, um, and to sort of set, to, to the extent that people are set and, and, and sit in those positions of sort of authority for longer than that period of time. I mean, their their, uh, their useful life has probably ended. So that the whole dynamic of um, of uh, of the regular refresh is really is really important. And again, I'm I'm showing my own sort of viewpoint here, but I don't see the the school activity as being fundamentally different. I think the school activity is something that really is very very close to what IGF itself is meant to achieve. And there's no reason for it to be done in a different way. I've 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 described the um, possibility before of integrating the, the school activities into IGF simply by calling, including in the call for proposals for workshops, we also call for educational sessions. We call for lessons. We call for anyone who would like to come to the IGF and present something as a lesson, as a, an educational session as opposed to a, dis a discussion session. It could be quite useful to make that distinction because some of what we see as workshop proposals are really educational sessions anyway. But if, it, if it's opened up to anyone who has some expertise, and I can imagine APC coming along, APC Women's Program coming along and, and doing an introductory course in gender and, and internet governance. And that could go for consumer issues, it could go for technical issues, it could go for all sorts of technical stuff, whether it's encryption and, and advanced topics or or, um, or basic topics. It could, it could go for um, almost any topic that we're interested in here, where there are expert organisations who can come along and actually offer a, offer a class. And I, I sort of think that to do that would be in the spirit of the way the IGF has been proposed, the way it's evolved, the way it's no doubt going to continue, to have a bottom-up inclusive process of bringing the, the school content into the into the um, into the mix as well, and that that also recognises that uh, that I don't think we've got, you know, I don't think the class uh, that the a AP SIG or any school can can produce a class of 2016, where we've got this this bunch of graduates who are going to come back in four or five years time and magically have the same uh, have a sort of common requirement just because they happen to be around in 2016. They're not going to have the same needs in 2020 to come back for the for the refresher course because they're going to be all going in different directions. And there's, there's a sort of an, an organic nature of the people and the, the environment that we work in that I think sort of needs to be recognised in creating a more organic approach. And I guess I'm sort of, I'm, I am, I'm sorry, John, I'm sort of contradicting a bit uh, what you said, but I do think we've got, you and I have got different approaches from a, um, if I could say, and you might disagree, but a, a sort of a, an institutional approach to something that, that in my case I think is, I, I feel more comfortable with, with a more organic approach, and I think um, so. I, I think much as the, though we'd like to apply structure and and sort of rigor and a, a regular process, I think um, it may be more productive to do something that's more organic and responsive. I really what what Young Bay said earlier um, about the school preceding the IGF, I think is actually really important. And I think that's um, that's something that could also be part of the 
aim of the school, and that is to to actually initiate or to uh, to um, incubate or to to spark off an IGF process in a subregion or a country, a, an area where it doesn't exist already, and and that's not that that process is not going to happen very naturally of its own accord, it can do, but a school could really be very helpful. If we see the school as something which would go into a particular place and say, well, we're going to have a school of internet governance in this particular place. We're going to bring in all of the locals who have an interest. And our measure of success is going to be whether or not an IGF process sort of comes out of that. And it might be too much to expect that you just do it once and then suddenly there's a healthy IGF. It probably requires more structure and more input and more, more process than that. But that could be another another aim of a school standing on its own and and conducting a, a set of activities sort of independently from an, an IGF process. But the idea would be to move on into an IGF process. And I'd, I'd, and I'd really say to move on into a more organic way of actually finding out the content from the community itself that they want to, to have, bringing it in in response to that rather than sort of setting a curriculum and saying, well, this is what it's going to be in 2016 and then again in 2020 and, and, and beyond. Um, so I think that's, that's all for now. I am, I am going to have to move on to a panel session. I'm, I'm on in at 2 o'clock, so I wanted to say a few things before I have to leave. Thanks. Um, so your organic approach, uh, I think, uh, is open to uh, the idea that uh, maybe um, uh, we don't decide uh, as a regular matter that you know uh, APSIG is co-located with APLIGF, uh, but we can decide that uh, 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 when we host APLIGF uh, for for each APLIGF, uh, we'll let the host or uh, the organizing committee uh, decide for each APL IGF, uh, explore the possibility of a co-locating. Um, uh, so I, I think that uh, you know, for the uh, next IPL IGF, uh, we can have a discussion again uh, on co-location. I, I think, that, uh, I mean, resource will uh, become a bigger problem as uh, the uh, uh, as APC uh, continues. And co-location uh, definitely uh, is helping a lot uh, in that regard. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think that's that's something concrete that we can come away with uh, for the next API GIF discussion. Um, please um, please go ahead. But uh, we have another question. Oh, uh, I'm question sorry. Uh, okay, uh, no, no, it's a related discussion. So, uh, I just post the. Uh, to the APSIG, uh, we want to discuss those issues at uh, in the Bangkok, including a uh, uh, IGF retreat. They made a couple of those uh, very interesting those uh, comment on uh, those uh, uh, school and uh, including all the way to the MOOC and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, in, in the case of MOOC, we didn't really think about that far yet. It's typically like a semester long uh, online course. But eventually, I guess we have to think about even that far. And uh, so the, I hope many of you to uh, read up uh, IGF retreat. And please do comment what's the, uh, what we we can do. Uh, we are wondering, shall we allocate uh, uh, 90 minutes for this discussion, which I'm, I'm proposing, or is something uh, shorter or even longer? Uh, I'll, I'll just very interesting those issues. And the uh, co-location, actually like uh, Africa did it once, and uh, over two weeks long. And it's a very exhausting. And uh, I talked to several people here. Would you like to have a two weeks long? Uh, uh, and they said, uh, no, no, really. <laughs> they said, like, a maximum is uh, one week. <laughs> and uh, 
of the six seems to be globally uh, typically five days. Uh, minimum four days, maximum six days. And uh, so the, I guess, will be uh, from second year is more likely a five days, <laughs> like a, joining a majority. And uh, so the all together, if we ever collocate, it will be more like a two weeks long. And uh, it's a, quite a challenge. Uh, KS can do it. <laughs> um, yes, put the gentleman in the back. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, uh, last question on comment because we do need to run. I think the next session will be coming in, okay. in, in very short. I'll, I'll make it short. Uh, this is Said from uh, Afghanistan. I'm, uh, just a comment, no question. Um, I think we are talking about a region that is so diverse from Japan to Afghanistan, where infrastructure and access is a problem. Yesterday we were in a session where a Japanese gentleman said, we don't have those problems at all. Um, so in terms of approaching leaders or individuals or practitioners in the IG world and enabling them to come and talk. And, and talk because there are some people who listen, not just talk because they can talk, but the fact that there are some organization like AP, RG, IGF, IGF, ICANN, and, and APNIC and other organizations who actually listen and then provide them with a list of resources that they can go back and, and, and and help out themselves. So I think in, in one way the institutional approach is necessary in context of Afghanistan where people actually don't have any concern toward IG at all, internal governance. Because I have seen that in the past one year when I talked to the uh, IT experts, ICT experts, and, and I talked to them about IG, some of the issues, either infrastructure or, or the content or human rights. They show disregard, complete disregard, because they don't have the background knowledge of, of the capacity that is available uh, to, to all of us. Um, so just to comment that this approach also would benefit uh, in, 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 in one particular context. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can you make closing, maybe a sentence too, then we, we kind of move on? Room 201. Uh, so we have MSG list and we have AP6 discuss list. So we may uh, we may have some some more further uh, discussion on that mailing list. And and uh, I just like to uh, say thank you uh, for the, the fruitful discussion. And I uh, hope you have some lunch <laughs> before too late. Thank you very much.